Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Pastor Jeff Jones, and uh, I pastor the Heritage Baptist Church. And uh, it's our pleasure, our, our great privilege to serve the Lord here in Columbus, Indiana. And if you're ever in this area, I uh, hope you'd call, stop by, and uh, visit with our church. And uh, we're located at 2010 Doctors Park Drive. And uh, this is the Sunday evening message uh, from uh, me, from the church, uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you would, grab your Bible. Let's uh, get out the Word of God and in just a uh, little brief time together. Let's uh, turn to Psalm 140. Psalm 140. And there's a series of Psalms here. Psalm 40, 140, 141, and 142 that I want to just kind of glance at and uh, point out something that's mentioned here again and again and again. And it has to do with this thing of uh, snares, traps that have been laid, and uh, how David deals with these things. He writes uh, each of these Psalms, and one of them, it says, was written in the cave and uh, so he knows about uh, traps. He knows about uh, having to try to escape. He knows what it's like to be pursued. And um, there are two kinds of animals in the world. There is the predator and the prey. And uh, I don't like being the prey. And uh, may God deliver me from that. So I'm going to read uh, probably all of Psalm 140. And it's only about 13 verses, but it's probably a little bit more than I would generally read uh, in this. But I think it'd be good for us to, to spend some time here together. Um, I had a time where uh, part of uh, my devotions on a lot of days is uh, I've got a kind of a scripture journal. And uh, I'll read certain passages of scripture. And as I read them, I'm looking for... God to deal with me. I'm looking for what stands out. And then in that journal that I'm looking at, it I will note th those things. And it's, it's brief. Uh, one page, one little page. Uh, I'll, I'll say a few things, write a few things down. And then out of those three or four chapters, or sometimes as many as five, um, I'll list a verse that, that stood out. And so uh, the last day that I did this, uh, I wrote down a few things about this, about deliverance. And um, so David starts in Psalm 140, verse number one, with the idea of being delivered. So let's, let's begin together and hope you're going to read along with me. It says, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, preserve me from the violent man which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips, Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who hath purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set agains or gins for me, Selah. What you notice in that verse number five, these four things, a snare, cords, a net, and then gins or gins. Um, and a gin would be, or gin would be a machine, a, a, a device, a um, device. And we're probably maybe most familiar with that, with like a cotton uh, gin uh, that would separate the seed from the cotton itself. It would pull it apart. And so this, it's a trap. It's a something that's been made. It's, it's a device to catch people in. Let's continue in verse number six. It says, I said unto the Lord, thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. 
Further not his wicked devices, lest they exalt themselves, Selah. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief, mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into the deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. And so deliverance comes from the Lord. Uh, he is our refuge. Uh, he is our helper. In this passage of scripture, just this these 13 verses here, uh, David mentions the evil man, the violent man, the wicked, the proud, and the evil speak speaker. <clears throat> and he says they are working uh, against him. They're working to overthrow him. They're working to catch him. And uh, he doesn't want to get caught in their hands. Uh, it's a, a bad place to be. Maybe all the same person. Maybe different people, different aspects of people. Um, they're evil, uh, violent, wicked, proud, and puffed up. They are uh, an evil speaker and speaking evil things, uh, David tells us. And so he recognizes, though, this wonderful thought in verse number 12, that th this is the case, that the Lord maintains the cause of the afflicted that God's working on our behalf. And we need, we need God to work on our behalf. I was reading a little article uh, written, it showed up in a, in a, a email I get from, uh, I think it's from Answers in Genesis. It's a ministry that uh, promotes uh, uh, creationism and, and uh, studies around that, particularly the first 11 chapters of Genesis are a big emphasis for them. And they do a lot of work with um, disproving evolution and holding up God's word. And uh, in the, one of these articles, that, uh, someone that deals with uh, animal life, they were talking about how uh, two different scientists had uh, uh, one uh, in the Philippines, one, I, I don't remember exactly, maybe Peru, somewhere in South America, possibly, had found these spiders. They were unknown before now, apparently. Um, this new species of spiders. And um, the spider had the ability or the um, talent or the gift of being able to make a web. And in that web, it, build, it would build something that looked like it, another spider, it would, it, it was able to build a decoy and it would stay there close to that other spider that it had built. And, uh, it would make that decoy, it would make it alive. It would, it would move it in such a way that other predators would try to attack the decoy and not, not the spider. Also it'd make other things, uh, afraid of it by being bigger than it really was. And uh, it would trap certain things in that web because of the decoy, the ability it had to make certain things in that web. And so I think about all the ways that uh, we are sometimes caught in things, uh, the decoys of uh, the wicked, um, the traps that are laid. And some of them are very ingenious, uh, ingenious, uh, in the sense that they are uh, crafty. Uh, they are geared to appeal to certain things, uh, almost uh, what I think uh, uh, Jim Berg says in some of his uh, writings, uh, designer lust is that it's very crafted to, to hit individuals uh, that would appeal to them in the greatest way. And so these traps are laid, and it mentions that in verse number in uh, Psalm 140, but it also mentions it again in Psalm 141. David says again in verse number nine there, 
He says, keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. And so they've laid these snares. Uh, they've set them in a way that um, David is fearful. Uh, David is asking for the help of the Lord, though. He says in verse number one of Psalm 141, he says, Lord, I cry unto thee. Uh, he says in uh, that same verse, give ear unto my voice when I cry and let my prayer be set uh, forth before thee as incense. And so he, he talks on and on about, uh, he knows that he needs help from the Lord. Uh, he says in verse eight, but mine eyes are unto thee, O Lord, O God, the Lord, and thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. He says, he said, don't let me, don't let me found bankrupt here. I need you. I, I trust you. I recognize uh, that you're there. And so uh, the trap is hidden by the wicked. And um, I, I wrote in my little journal here, my scripture journal, I, I wrote, Lord, help me to escape them also. Uh, they're set for David in the scripture here. And no doubt he'd seen it work on other people. <clears throat> but we know this, <clears throat> excuse me, that traps are laid for us, uh, that we deal with it. On, a, on oftentimes a daily basis and uh, maybe hour to hour even. And so we've got to be aware. We've got to turn our trust to the Lord that we're, we're not capable of, uh, of being aware of everything around us. Uh, we ought to be on high alert, situational awareness. We try to teach people, uh, try to uh, help uh, people that I love to, to be aware of what's going on around you, who's around you, the, the hours of the day. Uh, dangerous times, uh, places where there are transitional spaces that you need to be watchful. And we're living in a very violent world, but it's also a spiritually violent world where uh, the wicked, uh, Satan himself, this world uh, speak evil of Christian people. And um, we need to be situationally aware of these things. But God has to help us. He has to give us discernment, wisdom. Uh, things sneak in. Uh, the enemy is crafty. Uh, he's proud and boastful of uh, his, the way he takes certain Christians and, and destroys them. He wraps their mind in, in webs of lies. And, and so uh, there are times that we ought to be aware, but there are times that we find ourselves caught in the, in the snare. We're caught in the trap. We're caught in the cords, the nets. And uh, we can't escape. We can't get out. Uh, it's not within our power. And we're crying unto the Lord. He says again in, in Psalm 142, he says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. My, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And so he says on in verse three, he says, in the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Well, they've not done it in a way that you're going to see it. They've scattered things around on it to make it, make it, uh, uh, covered up and de deceitfully craftily, uh, uh, with great, uh, work. They've, they've, they've made it in a way that we can't see it. And, um, David says in verse four, he says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would help would know me. My refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto, the Lord, unto thee, O Lord, I said, thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. And so uh, there are persecutors that he's dealing with. He says in verse seven, bring my soul out of prison. He said, they've captured me. They've captured me. And he says that the righteous, he says that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about for thou shot deal bountifully with me. And so I think probably there, there's some of us that know what it's like to escape the snare that we when didn't get out of it alone. God helped us, uh, but we, we've, we've made the escape by crying unto the Lord. He was our refuge. The, the, the door was thrown open and escape was found in him. And you know, when that happens, there ought to be praise and thanksgiving given to the Lord for the, for the escape from that snare. You know, some people go most of their life bound up and captured. 
held uh, by the cords of sometimes things that they've involved themselves in and uh, they've not known anything about the victory and the, 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 the ability to conquer. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're a serious Christian, you can know the victorious Christian life. You can know what it's like to, to not just escape, but to, but to turn the tables on those things, uh, to reveal them to other people, to point them out. Say, hey, you need to watch that. Uh, to point people to the Lord, the, the great help for their life. And so uh, let's learn from David's talk about the snare. Let's learn uh, that we're weak oftentimes, that we need to cry unto God, that we're proud. We say uh, when we don't pray, when we don't ask, when we don't complain unto God, it, it shows that we're proud in the sense that we think we can handle it. We don't need him. But we do, we do, every day, every moment of every hour. And so we need to die to ourself and say, Lord, I need you. And uh, I'm not gonna let uh, bitterness, I'm not gonna let um, my own pride and selfishness and, and the wicked way that, that wants to take charge, I'm gonna set all that aside. I want you to be in control. I want you to show me and then help me to escape. Help me to walk rightly in front of you. And I'm gonna praise you. Uh, for what you've done, how you've helped me, helped my family. And so sometimes if we're not careful, we're going to lead people that we care about, people that we love into the trap that's right in front of us. And so uh, I don't want to do that either. I don't want to lead uh, anybody that I love into something that would entrap both of us. And so um, let's be careful. I know uh, some years ago, uh, I believe it was the Wall Street Journal did a story on a city uh, not too far south of us. And uh, it was when this opioid uh, epidemic really was uh, coming to kind of a, a head. And uh, the county that uh, they were talking about in the city, uh, a huge spike in uh, HIV infection. Um, and uh, it was due to needle sharing. And I know one of the things that in the article that was mentioned that people were trying to help uh, healthcare workers would go into a home and they would uh, see not just a person or one generation that was involved in drugs, but they'd see multi-generations. They'd see the children, the parents, and then even the grandparents in the same house, all uh, involved in the same uh, uh, addiction to drugs. And so what we sometimes do is that uh, we get caught and we teach those that are watching us, we influence them to get caught in the same way. And what we need to do is lead the way out and find the way out. It's in the Lord and we can influence them in the other way, uh, leading them from darkness into light. And so just a little simple thing here I saw in these three, the, these three Psalms about the snare. And when things get repeated again and again, I try to take notice of that. And so you watch out for the snare this week and uh, be careful as you walk in this world that you'd walk rightly, walk with the Lord, walk with confidence and faith in him, walk as a free person. Now, I'm a free man in the Lord and um, I'm thankful for the freedom that he's given me. Uh, where there is truth, there is liberty. Uh, where there is truth, uh, where the word of God reigns, we have light. And so uh, walk in that way. Amen. God bless you. And I hope you have a great week. I'm praying for you. You pray for me. And uh, let's get closer to the Lord. God bless you.